And here it is all laid out together. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'm gonna to show you what may be the perfect belt survival kit. Stay tuned. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody to make sure and give this video a thumbs up. I say it at the end of the video, but a lot of times people forget, I often do when I'm watching videos. Also, make sure and check out our website, www.waypointsurvival.com. That's where you can sign up for survival and bushcraft classes. We have a lot to teach all the way from phase one through phase four, which is our primitive survival and bushcraft classes. We'd love to see you in a class, so make sure and check that out. This kit is packed in a very small and convenient pouch. This pouch is made by Condor and you can get it right now for $12.95 on Amazon and I'll make sure and put a link down in the description box below. The next item that we have is this Cree flashlight. This is the Cree Ultra Fire and it does have an adjustable lens. It's very bright so for all the way from a point of, of light all the way to a broad beam. Push button on the back and what I like about this in particular not only does it have o-ring seals but it takes a single AA battery. So this is really great, it's efficient and it will help you carry your light for a long time, doesn't weigh a lot and it's a very common battery to replace should you need to do so. And you can buy these on Amazon, you can get three of them for about $14. And again, I'll make sure and put a link down in the description box. Opening the first flap here, which is not only buckle fastened, but also with a Velcro enclosure, we find that we have a P38 can opener on a key ring, some paracord, and attached to that is a Gerber knife. This is Gerber USA. I like this. It's got a place to put your finger in. It's really great steel. It's a very compact knife. I bought this at a yard sale for a dollar. It had a broken tip and I reprofiled it to make it look better and work better. And so that's what fits inside the first one. We also have a Bic lighter. Bic lighters are better. We buy the kind with the wrap on it. You take the wrap off and you can see through the clear plastic then, opaque white actually, but you can see how much fluid you've got left in it. We also have some chap fix. This is chapstick, and if you haven't seen my video on all the ways you can use chapstick in a survival situation, I would encourage you to watch that. Last but not least, we have an extra Energizer Lithium battery. I like Energizer Lithiums. They're more expensive, but they have a 20-year shelf life, and I've never had one leak on me. These are absolutely fantastic. This one is still good until 2027, so I've had these for a long time. Opening up the main zippered compartment, the first thing that we come to is a Aquamira Frontier water filter. This is good for about 30 gallons. And the straw, which attaches to the back, I had to cut this down a little bit to fit, but this will allow me to get water. Next, we have a hank of paracord, about six feet or so. We also have this casualty blanket. This is olive drab. It's 52 inches by 84 inches, and you can get a four pack of these for about $18, $19. I also carry what's called the outdoor mosquito patch. And this is something that's sealed up, and there's two of them in here, and you can put this on the outside of your gear or in your pocket, and basically you open this up, and when you tear it open, uh, it begins to emit a scent, which drives away mosquitoes. It's a very handy thing, super thin, takes up almost no space, great to carry. Before I forget, this is Molly compatible, and on this side of the Molly webbing, I have a small nail. That's about an eight penny, and it's an aluminum nail, so it won't rust. The last item in the main pouch is an Altoids survival kit. I know a lot of people make fun of these, but you can pack these quite complete. I've got mine sealed with tape, some bit of duct tape here on the back. You never have too much of that. I'm going to open this up and show you the contents. Once we get this off, we find that on the back side of the duct tape, we have placed a curved needle. 
This is great for suturing. If should you need to do that and you don't have a suture kit, we can use the small inner strands from the paracord as you twist them apart to sew this back together or fishing line as well. So this is a handy thing to have. Opening up the kit, we have a number of items. First of all, here at the top, taped in, we have a couple of band-aids and a wound closure strip. And that stays taped to the lid so that it stays secure. You'll also notice that we have a wire survival saw. I know people make fun of these, but if you're careful and you use it right, this can actually cut wood and do a pretty good job. And make sure to get the good ones, you get what you pay for. We also have multiples of these Tinder Quick fire tabs. These are just absolutely awesome for packing in your kit. They are waterproof. I've got five of them here. And you can fluff these up and strike them with a ferro rod or any other kind of match or lighter. And these will help you get your fire started. Also folded in here, we have some Motrin, some ibuprofen. And down in here we have a very effective light. This is a backup light to our main kit. A small button compass. We have some Aquamira water purification tablets. We also have a little spool. This is a sewing bobbin with 80 pound spider wire fishing line. This of course can be used for fishing, shelter building, as well as suturing as I mentioned earlier. Next, we have about 10 feet of olive colored snare wire. We have six of these windproof, waterproof matches with a striker inside. We also have a small ferro rod magnesium bar and has a hole drilled in it so I can actually put this on a keychain or on a cord around my neck so I don't lose it. A small pack of triple antibiotic ointment. An alcohol prep pad. A trick birthday candle. You light this, the wind blows it out, it relights. This is excellent for starting fires in an emergency situation. I also have a number of swivels as well as hooks and sinkers all in this small pack. This is my fishing kit. Of course it goes together with the fishing line. You can carry that anywhere. Next, I have a very small lead pencil, and to go with that, a couple of sheets folded over of right in the rain waterproof paper. We also have a couple of brass safety pins. These have multiple uses in survival from pinning your clothes back together. People say you can use them for improvised fish, book, fish hooks, but I say that's pretty hard to do. We have a nice size Fresnel lens for fire starting, as well as finding small splinters and things that might help you with your first aid. We also have a signal mirror, and this is just a piece of a replacement mirror that is used when you uh, have a damaged side mirror in your car. You can buy a whole sheet of this and you cut out the size and you use it on your car until you can get a whole mirror replacement. But these are great because you can cut them with a pair of scissors and you can cut them to whatever size you need for your survival kit. I also have here a small aluminum foil. This is folded up so that I can unfold this. It's very heavy duty. And this, of course, you can make a container for cooking or boiling water. It can also be used for signaling. Also taped to the inside here, we have a surgical blade for debriding wounds and cutting away necrotic tissue. And on the back side, we have a piece of a hacksaw blade, which has been sharpened on one side to make an extra knife blade, as well as the saw. And this is our scraper that we use for the ferro rod. At the very bottom, we have this beverage bag, which is folded and taped. This comes from an MRE, and this will hold quite a bit, uh, 12 to 16 ounces of water. And it can also handle hot water, so you can boil in your aluminum foil, pour it in here, 
then after it cools you can have something to drink. So this is great. This also works for transpiration. You could put this over top of a green limb, branches, and get some water that way. And here it is all laid out together with all of its parts and pieces. And it goes into that black zippered bag. Fits comfortably on your waist. It covers all of the seven survival priorities that I talk about. Fire, water, shelter, food, signaling, navigation, and first aid. It's all packed up. Ready to go, ready for quick deployment to put on your belt and go, take a day hike or whatever trip you wish. And remember, if your survival kit's too big, you'll probably be tempted to leave it back at your campsite or leave it at home. This is small and it's designed to overcome those challenges so you'll have everything with you that you could possibly need for an emergency overnight stay or more. So this is what it looks like when it's attached to the belt. It's on my waist next to my multi-tool. And I think this is a well-balanced and just about the perfect little survival kit. You could carry it on the back if you wished. Uh, it'd be even more out of the way. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take great survival and bushcraft classes here at our beautiful facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.